In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Python mailing program that sends random memes to your friends and coworkers continually, every minute, until you decide to stop it. As always, please make sure you check the video description for important links and information. Okay, so what's this program going to do? In summary, it's going to send a request to imageflip.com and extract an image link. Then, it will insert that image into an HTML template attach it to an email, and then send it to your victims. <clears throat> I mean, friends or coworkers. Before we get started, there's a few libraries you'll need to install with either Conda or Pip if you don't have them already. The first is Requests. We're using this library to send the HTTP request to ImageFlip. The next is Beautiful Soup. We're using this library to parse the HTML. Everything else we're using is part of the standard Python library. I'm going to be using JupyterLab to demonstrate the code in this tutorial because I find it the easiest way to present both a code editor and an interactive shell on the same screen. However, feel free to use whatever code editor or IDE that you feel most comfortable with. So without further ado, let's get started. First, let's import all of the required libraries. Import time. We're going to use the sleep function as a timer. Import SMTP lib. This is the simple mail transfer protocol library and what actually sends the email message. From email.message import email message. This is what will allow us to build our email message. Import requests. This is what we'll use to download the HTML content from ImageFlip's website. Finally, from BS4 import beautiful soup. This will parse the HTML text we scrape with the requests library. Next, set the base URL we're going to request, which is ImageFlip's website. If I copy and paste this URL into the browser, you can see that it automatically routes to a random meme. This is the behavior that we're going to exploit as a random meme generator. Next, create the HTML body template. Very simply, I'm creating an opening and closing div tag and then adding an image tag in the middle. Instead of hard coding a source, I'm going to use curly braces so that I can use Python string formatting to insert a new link every time a new one's requested. Let's create some variables for the message settings. First, create a variable for username and password. Next, set the SMTP host. For this, it really depends on your mail service. I'll post a link to the host's for the most common mail services as well as the port numbers. I'm using Outlook for this example, so the host is smtp-mail.outlook.com. If you're using Gmail, you'll also need to go through an extra step of enabling unsafe applications, which is what Gmail considers your Python application when it's accessing the Gmail mail server. However, you can adjust this in your Gmail settings. Again, check the link in the video description for more information on Gmail. Next, set the port number. As I said, this depends on your mail service, but most of the time it's port 587. Finally, set the delay. This is the amount of time that you want to wait before sending the next message. I'm going to use 5 seconds for demonstration purposes, but I'd recommend something like 10 or 15 minutes, maybe even up to 30 minutes or an hour. You're not trying to blow up their inbox, just annoy them a bit. Plus, you don't want to get yourself into trouble by creating a denial of service attack or bombarding their inbox, and that could get you in trouble actually with the FBI. So before we create our first function, I want to demonstrate some of the functionality of requests and beautiful soup libraries. Now this is not meant to be a full tutorial on these, but I will show you as much about these two libraries um, that you can effectively use them for this project. So let's go ahead and copy all of this over to my Python shell. You don't have to do this step. I'm just showing you um, what's going inside the function so that you can understand the parts a little bit better. The requests library is pretty easy to use for basic stuff like what we're doing. Requests has a git method that accepts a URL and returns a response object. Now what's happened is I've just sent a git request to this URL and it will return a response object con containing HTML content. The response object has some interesting properties such as status code, status reason, um, and also a text property, which is essentially the raw HTML text. 
This looks like a mess now, but it'll be much nicer when we parse it with beautiful soup. So type in soup equals beautiful soup, and then pass in the response text. Then we're going to tell the object which parser to use to parse the text. And for this, we're going to use the built-in HTML parser. Now that the HTML is parsed, we can find objects by class, tag name, ID, etc. But we have to know what we're looking for. So to get a clue, let's go back to the web page. In most browsers, you can right click on an element and click inspect to see the HTML code related to certain elements on the page. As you can see, this image is an image tag and it has an ID of IM. Also, this image has a SRC or source property that contains the URL of the image. And this is what we're really trying to get. So let's go back to the code. The soup object has a find method and we're going to use it to find a specific tag with a specific ID. So type in image underscore tag equals soup dot find the first argument is the tag we're looking for, which is image or IMG. Then we're going to type in ID equals IM to search for that specific ID with the image tag. Now, if you print this image tag, you'll see the contents of the item is exactly what we expected. And it's the only the contents of the image tag. Now, this is different than what we saw on the website, of course, since it's a randomly generated image. The tax properties can be accessed in the same way that you would access a Python dictionary. So the property that contains the URL is the source property. So all we need to do to access that is type in image underscore URL equals image underscore tag, which is the object. And then we're going to slice it by source SRC. Now, if you print image underscore URL, you'll see that it's exactly what we want with one exception. We need to add the HTTPS prefix to the URL. So let's go ahead and add that now. Great. Now, if I follow this link, it should take me right to the image. Okay, let's put this code into our function. And I'm also going to consolidate some of these steps. One more thing I need to add, I noticed that when I ran this code occasionally, and I mean very occasionally, I couldn't even get it to do it for this demonstration, but image flip will return a GIF instead of an image. Now, if this happens, the current code will crash because it's looking for that image tag. Now, all we need to do to fix this is add a try accept block that catches a type error and reverts to a video tag instead of an image tag. Let's copy this to the shell and run it a few times. And what should happen is I get a different random meme URL each time. Excellent. Next, let's create a function that creates an email message. This function is going to accept a list of email addresses, which are the recipients of the message. The first thing we want to do is get our random meme URL using our get random meme function. Next, create the HTML body by inserting the URL into our template. Now we're going to use the email message class to create a new email message. The email message object has several properties which you can set like you would a dictionary key value pair, such as from, to, and subject properties. Go ahead and set the from property using your email address. Next, we're going to join the list of recipients into a single string using the join string method. And just to show you how this works, let's go back to the shell. Let's say I have three email addresses in a list. The join method creates a single string from an iterable, such as a tuple or a list, in this case, and separates them with the given text. In this case, we want to separate each email address in the list with a comma and a space and then we use dot join and then pass in the iterable. Now I have a single string of recipients that I can use in my message. 
So let's go ahead and add this to our code. Now let's add the subject text. You can use the subject of your choice. I'm going to use get back to work. Finally, we need to use the set content method to add the HTML body. If you're adding an HTML body, you also need to add one additional argument, and that is subtype equals HTML. If you don't do this, then the string will be added as plain text, and all you'll see for this example is raw HTML in your email, which is not what you want. And then finally, we'll return the message object. Okay, let's test this function real quick and print out the message items to see if everything went okay. All right. Finally, we're going to create the function that starts up the email server and sends messages until we decide to end the program. We'll call this function send random memes, and it's going to accept a list of recipients. So create the email server by typing in server equals smtplib.smtp, and then we're going to set two arguments, host equals smtp host, and port is equal to smtp port, which are the variables that we set above. To start the server, use start tls. And now we're going to log in using the credentials that we saved earlier. Okay, now we need to create a while loop that continues to create and send messages until we manually break the loop. We're also going to keep track of how many messages we send uh, to see if something's happening in the console. Inside the while loop, type in message equals create message and then pass in the recipients list. Now we'll use the server's send message method on the message object we just created. Now we're going to increment the message counter and then print the message number. Finally, we're going to create a timer with a sleep function and pass in the delay we created earlier. Now, as it is, this loop will continue forever. So what we need to do is create a way to break cleanly out of the loop. So what we're going to do is put a try accept block in. Now, the exception that we're going to create is going to be a keyboard interrupt which returns an exception when we pr press control C. Now, because I'm using this in a notebook, I won't be able to use this functionality, but uh, because I'm gonna use a button, but control C, if you're running this from a console, is what will interrupt and stop this program. So when that happens, we want to close down the server with the close method and then break from the loop. Now, another approach you could take instead of using a while loop is to use a for loop with a set number of message iterations. Okay, now we're ready to try out our program. Now, if you're coding in a regular Python script, you can go ahead and add your entry point with if name is equal to main and then put the rest of this code we're going to type in. Um, since I'm in a, in a notebook, uh, I'm going to just go ahead and put this in the next cell. Now I'm going to add a list of recipients. Next, I'm going to call the send random memes function and pass in the list of recipients. So let's go ahead and create a starting program message. And then finally, I'm going to add a closing statement so that whenever my program ends, it tells me that it's ending. Okay, now let's run the script and see what happens. As you can see, it appears that messages are being sent. So let's open up Outlook. And indeed, I'm spamming myself with random memes. Now, as I said, I used a very short delay to demonstrate how this works, but you'll want to make sure that you use a much longer delay to avoid getting into trouble with both your friends or your email server or worse. Alrighty, I've posted a link to the code in the video description and I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to see other videos as they're posted. See you in the next video.